All right, hey everybody. So welcome to a video I'm gonna do on how to get through some of the uh, Cheat Engine tutorials. Uh, I think it's new what they have here because uh, it used to be just, well, they still have the old tutorials in here, um, but they also have the Cheat Engine tutorial games here, which are pretty cool. Um, it's like they tried to give you like a real world, world application of things on here, which is really nice. And they've even put a few little tricks in there. Um, like on this one, I found that, you know, you would think you could just change this ammo to a reload number, but mm, it's a little bit harder to find than you would think. Um, I think you have to do an unknown initial value scan, but I'm going to do it a different way just because I like to be different. And a lot of the time um, you'll see that there's a little light bulb here that'll bring you to a link or a link to a video on YouTube where you can find tutorials, but then you have to go to each one individually. Um, so, you know, why am I doing this if the tutorials already exist? Uh, mostly because, you know, I felt like it and I feel like doing things a little bit of a different way and I like to, you know, group them together so that instead of seeing each individual video, you can just pull up one and then you can watch them at, you know, at one time. So, without further ado, here we go. Um, so, you might think you're going to mess with this. I'm actually going to find the health bar up here and go from there. So, the first thing you need to do is, of course, select your process. Um, you have a couple of different methods of doing that. Easiest one is go to applications and pick the application you're using, but you could also go into processes and you actually find that this has the same process ID or PID 0003 FC0. If you go in here, it's the same one 0003 FC0. But anyway, just select the one that you need and then you get going. So I'm going to start with an unknown initial value scan. First scan, obviously uh, not much going on there. All right, so now the value decreased, so we'll go with decrease value. Cool. Do it again. Decrease value. Cool. One thing I like to do, just to get rid of some of these uh, values that are like changing constantly, that's what the red means, the value change. I'll do an unchanged value scan. And just do that a few times. And that'll get rid of a lot of the, uh, a lot of the junk that you don't really need. All right, and now I will decrease value again. Boom, value decreased. All right, and now we're starting to see a few that could potentially be it. It's probably not any of the zeros. But we'll do one more shot, and then we'll decrease value again. And it's probably one of these fours, right? And these are actually both the same, well, close to the same address. They're just slightly off. One is a, one is a float, one's four bytes. But we'll just do that and watch the number go up. It looks like they're the same. Looks like they both will work. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to 1. If you change it to 0, I think what will happen is the game will get confused because it wants to go from, it wants to do a check when you get to, uh, when the value goes below 1 rather than, you know, a check it, is it 0 or below. <laughs> so anyway, uh, did it, it's gone, mission accomplished, I'm moving on. <laughs> so that's the first one. Uh, second one here. Uh, both of these things will shoot at you, and this one is kind of interesting in the way it's done. Um, you can get your health, which I'm going to do, and I'm going to try an exact value scan to start with. So we'll search for 100, and I'm going to shoot, and now I'm going to search for 96, and there's my health. So I'm going to lock my health at 100. And now I'm actually going to do something a little bit weird. I'm going to undo my scan. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do an unknown initial value scan. And do my first scan. And basically what I want to do is find this health, and then I also want to find this health. This health works way differently than this health, though. And yeah, I'm probably going to do things a cheap way, just because. But we'll do decreased value. Boom, increase value, boom, decrease value, boom, decrease value, boom, boom, decrease value. All right, so it looks like 95 could be the number or it could be 190. It could be messing with me and making it, um, you know, different than what you would expect. So like if I hit this, I would, if I hit this, I would expect this to go down by like two. Or one. Okay, so one. So it looks like 
That's interesting. They're both going down. I wonder... Well, let's see what the difference is here. So if I set this to 1, that doesn't do anything. Set that to 1. Okay, that drops his health down to a number. I said it's to 300. I bet this will make the bar go. Yep. So 200 was the max health for this one. Um, this number is just a display number. So people ask me sometimes, like, what? It, like, I get two numbers, and one of them, you know, makes sense, and then one of them does. I can't ever change. Uh, this is just the display number. This is what that is. So this number will follow whatever I put here. So if I set this to 50, that'll be 25. And what this is really doing as a float, it's a percentage. So. 25 actually means what percentage of this bar is actually being filled up. So if I set it, this to 100, so I'll go to 50 because half the bar is filled up. If I set this to 150, 75% of the bar will be filled up. And if I set this to, let's say, 400, 200% of the bar is filled up. So that's how that, that's how that display works. And the reason why they did that, I'm guessing, is to try and be kind of tricky like because if you search for a hundred and then you like because your health starts at 100 and if you assume their health starts at 100 then really what you're doing is just kind of uh looking for that you're going to get that percentage vice the actual number and this one i know <laughs> and i i guessed correctly initially to this is not going to be the same as this one and it, i think it actually works completely different and I'll show you what I mean. So if we do an unknown initial value, the exact same way, shoot that one. I'll shoot it twice just to be sure. Uh, you know, I'll shoot it three times just to be sure. Okay, the, number, the, the thing went down. And now, oh, darn it. Let me shoot it three times again just to be, to be positive. So now we'll say decreased value. We'll do it three more times. Decreased value, three more times. Decreased value, three more times. Decreased value three more times. Decreased value three more times. Decreased value three more times. Decreased value. Okay, so now we end up, uh, we see like a 176. And then we have this 88, which would again be like the display value, right? And if we set the 200, that goes to there. Well, you know what? Does this work? Huh, maybe it does work. Well, you know what? Let's just set both of these to one. And see what happens. So shoot, shoot. Oop. Okay, cool. Works. Oh, it doesn't work. Doesn't work the way I expected at all. Uh oh dear. Something's weird here. Oh no. <laughs> oh, okay, it worked. <laughs> okay, so that somehow worked. I'm not sure what the what the reasoning is behind that, what the logic was, but yeah. Once one of them blew up, um, cool stuff happened. So, great. All right. So, got through that one. And we'll unfreeze this. And then we'll move on. All right. So, now we have a uh, another game here, which this one is like a snowman with spikes. And uh, you're supposed to jump on all of the different platforms. And uh, it's kind of weird because, like, whoa. <laughs> it's kind of weird because... Um, he doesn't jump as high unless you have momentum going for you and well sometimes he doesn't jump the right distance anyway but yeah it's kind of weird but anyway the goal is to pretty much light up all these platforms and then get to the door but once you light up all the platforms all the spikes will actually move to the door which makes it kind of a pain so what we'll do instead is we'll uh go ahead and Start by trying to find the number or the uh, position of these different spikes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, uh, we'll start with this one right here. And what we're going to do is assume that left is a decreasing value and right is an increasing value. Just because that's how most 2D platform type games work. Like they'll start with zero being like over here and one being on, you know, this side or whatever number the maximum is. Um, it, it could work differently, so you really just have to, like, you know, you just have to kind of guess. Or you can do an unchanged, or you can just, you can do a change value search. There's a lot of different ways to do it, but we'll just assume for now. So I'm going to say that right here is where we start. So we do our first scan, and we're going to say he's moving to the right, so the value is increasing. And I'm just pausing it every time, just so I can not have to kind of guess 
<laughs> that he's moved or not, or if he's stopped moving or whatever. And do another increased value, and now he's starting to move towards the left, and he's he's left of that spot that I had him before. So decrease value, and let him move again. Decrease value, move again. Decrease value. Okay, so I've got um, a couple values here. I've got two actually. I'm not sure which one's which. This might correlate to two of them. So we'll do that real quick. And all right. Oh, it does so it's both of these two. So that's neat. Uh, okay. I think this one might be the bottom most. No, it's the top most one. So this is the bottom most. One. Okay. So a couple of things that you can do here that'll be interesting. Um, number was number one is you can browse the memory region for the code that you're looking at. Now we're gonna want to switch our view to uh, float. Play type float here. All right, and what we'll do is we'll kind of look around a little bit. You can actually generally assume that the positions are close together. So we were at fifteen four nine zero four here, that point two right there. Um, this might actually be the up down. So let's try changing this to like a one and yep, that'd be the one. So there we go, progress. Uh, now the next thing is figuring out where these other three are. And there's kind of a quick, easy, I wouldn't say dirty way to do it, but there's a way to do it. Um, and what we'll do is we'll do a find out what writes to this address and we will let it run for a second. And as you can see, we get a big or a bunch of calls to that address, which would be most likely what's causing it to move. And we'll so show that in the disassembler. And that's where we get this assembly code here. And what we can do with that is we can actually do a couple things. One, we can replace with code that does nothing, which will cause them all to basically stop moving in theory. Uh, but the other thing we do is also find out what addresses this instruction accesses. So we'll do that and let it run again. And hey, look at that. So we've got all three of these addresses, I think, because we got 4804, that one, uh, 904, which is the one there, and then 22C84, two, two which is the other one. And now we can basically lock all of those. Great, and they're all locked, and there we go. Easy enough. And now the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this instruction, or I'm gonna add this address to my code list. And I'm actually gonna cross that there. And I'm gonna do the same thing for each of these. So this one, browse the memory region, find that, add that address to the address list, boom. Uh, or, yeah, go here, browse that memory region, and then do the same thing, add that address to the address list. To sneeze. Um, all right, and so what I'll do now is I'm going to set all of these to something like two, which will drop them all off the screen. All right, easy enough. And from here on, it's just a matter of hitting all the platforms. And then, well, that's the hard part, unfortunately. Come on, get up there. There you go. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, this is the most annoying part of this whole thing is, oh, I hate you. Because it's not like, you know, uh, I screwed that one up, but I knew I screwed it up from the beginning, but I still did it. Here we go again, and nope. Oh, good lord. I should be able to do this so easily at this point. There we go. Alrighty then. Oh, good. Well. Oh, okay, let's do this again then. We'll just run all the way. There is another, oh my gosh. I'm about to show you another method of doing this, which will be so much better. Okay then. Uh, I'm just getting annoyed by this. All right, there we go. And then I gotta make this really weird, weird kind of, Jump there. Okay, there we go. And yeah, we'll have the spike that's still there in a weird spot because there's a code somewhere that's trying to set these values, <clears throat> but it doesn't 
quite override. So there we go. We did it. And hey, you've beaten all three games and you've beaten the integrity check. So neat. Um, so that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, you don't have to. I think the integrity check has to do with uh, whether you knocked out code or not. And that's pretty much it. Like you could have done something to knock out code and then it would have changed the overall memory um, size and then the game would have known that you messed with it. Which ideally what you want to do is not mess with the overall memory size. That way the game can't detect you as easily. And bear in mind when you do things like find out what writes to this address, you are hooking into the program. So there is the potential that it will find you, especially if it's like looking for something like this. Um, but the main, main idea here is I have, in fact, shown you how to beat all three of those in one video. And I kind of think I explained it a little bit better than uh, the other tutorial, maybe just slightly. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it helpful. Hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below because I would love to answer those. And uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, and, uh, you know, share. Share because sharing is caring. And until the next one, try not to die.